So I have two heads, one the radio amateur, PI1 IVO, and the other on the hand, uh, Master of Science student at the Open University in the Netherlands. I do the part-time beside my daily job, so it takes a little bit longer than a normal master project. But What's in here? How I got involved in all this as a radio amateur. I will shortly tell something about Genso, uh, about the orbit determination project, of course. I will mm, show you that's a non-ideal system for doing orbit determination. But also tell you about ideas how I think it's possible. Uh, some simulation will be performed later. And there's time for questions, of course, in the end. So, how do, how do I get, get involved? Uh, I was looking for a Master of Science project. I study computer science at the Open University in the Netherlands. Uh, at the MZ Colloquium, a few years ago, I spoke to Graham and Neil about Genso and that kind of stuff. So I sent an email to, uh, to Neil. Hey, do you have some nice computer science project? And yeah, we have a lot of projects. So out of the 10 or 20 projects, I selected <laughs> a nice one. And it's a really nice combination of my study, computer science, the hobby, amateur radio, and the work I'm doing as a software engineer. So it's really fun, I think. Uh, for now, I finished the preparation phase, reading into uh, orbital mechanics and that kind of stuff. And I'm just uh, starting up the project itself. So no results yet, only thoughts about it. Maybe next year, a nice presentation of if it's possible or not. So Genso, it's the global educational network for satellite operations. In a nutshell, it's a really large number of receiving stations, also transmitting, but mainly receiving, I think. It's distributed around the world. It's special. It's connected by the internet, and it's kind of centrally coordinated. So you use multiple stations around the world to track satellites working together. And the ground stations are mainly amateur radio-like stations, not all, but in that direction. That's an important input for the project, I think. So what's the project about? Um, the orbital data, the two-line elements, are uh, provided by NORAD these days. Uh, they're free today, but not certain in the future. And the idea is to use the Kenso observations, the cap capability of Kenso, for performing orbit determination of those satellites. And it's also uh, important here, you, have, you can maybe provide fast orbital data during the launch and early operations. Normally it takes one or two or a few days for NORAD to release the first TLEs, and hopefully Genso can do better. I don't know, but that will, we'll find out. We we'll focus on uh, LEO satellites, of course, and the main question is, can we do without NORAD? With a smiley, I don't know. <laughs> so it is Genso, a lot of stations, for now, we're starting with just a few, but maybe when it's actually working, there will be tens of maybe 100 or 200. I don't know. We will see what happens. And the question is, can we determine the orbit of the satellite flying around? And to what precision? That's uh, also an important question. So there was Kenso in a nutshell, but from the orbit determination perspective, uh, Genso is a little bit different. It's, for me, it's the global educational network for satellite observations, not operations. I only use downlink data for my project. So no, uh, no uh, things happening with unmanned uh, transmissions and that kind of things. Uh, Genso makes use of the SGP4 algorithm for the prediction of satellites. We uh, are happy to uh, use Dave's conversion from C to Java. And Genso used TLEs for the satellite predictions, of course, together with the SGP4. Uh, Genso is centrally coordinated. That's nice for the orbit determination, so you can spread around some things. Hey, Genso, do this for me. Uh, Genso is designed for communication, not detection of satellites. That's an important thing for the determination. You don't can actually very accurately point your antenna. You just have a rough, rough idea where the satellite is. And you really have a large amount of low resolution stations. That's also an important thing. Um, yes. So they're relatively imprecise for orbit determination, the stations. You have relatively large beam width of your antenna, maybe 
10 or 20 degrees or whatever. So within that beam, the satellite is somewhere. So if you have one station, there's no use of doing orbit determination, but maybe when you have 100 stations, then it's getting better. And also, for example, a rotator, a JSO rotator already moves in the wind a few degrees. So that's an area you start with, whatever you're doing. And you have no information about the distance or the range of the satellite. Also a problem for orbit determination. And one major thing, uh, the antennas of Genso point in the direction which Genso thinks the satellite is. So you put the TLE in the SGP4 algorithm and it points to a location where you think the satellite is. That's not the position where the satellite really is, but it will be somewhere in the neighborhood. So it is really challenging, but I think it's, it is possible. Oh, this about the, uh, the predicted position of satellite. We have three stations here. A GSS means ground station server. One, two, three. In the middle you see the satellite. When you use the same TLE, uh, not updated, you see the satellite drifting a little bit. So this is the predicted position, but the real satellite is here. So this one is losing the satellite when you do not update the TLE. Next step, number one is also losing the satellite. And on the third, all stations lose the satellite when you do not update the TLEs on the long run. So you think it's in the middle, but it's not there. But, and you have no clue where it is. Uh, you maybe have a clue, but just a normal amateur radio station can't correct for that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make an analysis of possible techniques to perform the orbit determination in Genso. Uh, and I'm comparing those different techniques, which is the most effective technique to use in Genso for orbit determination. It will be a combination, I think. And I do first a, a small theoretical analysis, then a large simulation and then do some prototype testing with my own ground station or parts or of Kenzo. And the simulation I'm doing be because Kenzo is not ready for orbit determination, it's almost ready for rolling out in, into the field. But I think Kenzo first has to focus on the main things to do and then on version 8 or, or 16, whatever, we implement orbit determination. Uh, orbit determination phases. I think it's important to identify several stages. When you have no idea where the satellite is, you're into the first phase. No initial information about the orbit. I think that won't happen because even after a launch you know some inclination and some, some height of the satellite. So entering stage two, but it's still not clear where the satellite is. Slowly when you perform orbit determination, you get more and more data in until you get to the point where you're almost as accurate as NORAD is. And when you're at that stage, I think it's important to keep the TLE updated because the satellite is drifting slowly away, but it's really a small drift, I think. So this one is just optimizing, and this is really searching for the satellite. Where is it? So what we do, do we do? We make some calculations. For example, for the orbital period, you just point your antenna in one direction or with 100 stations, you see it appear and you wait until the next round when it's coming up and you have a rough idea of the uh, mean motion or the orbital period. That's really just calculating. Uh, the other thing I'm planning to do is do some deviating TLEs. It's a little bit trial and error learning. You know roughly where the satellite is you send a wrongly TLE to uh, five stations, not a wrongly TLE to another five stations, and you see what the effect is. When it's getting better, that's a good TLE. When it's getting worse, you throw that away. And I'm not just changing any TLE. You just focus on the inclination first, and then do the argument of perigee or right ascension of ascending node. You just change it smartly, not, not randomly. And what you can do in the end, make use of the known uh, orbital perturbations, when you know a satellite is moving slowly, you can use that in adapting your TLE, like actually the SCP-4 algorithm is also doing, but we have to do it also there. And then, instead of having one kind of TLE, uh, Genso will have three kind of TLEs. That's the Genso optimal TLE, that's the TLE Genso thinks which is the best. 
Then the Genso deviated once to test if it can be improved. So it's a little bit shifted in many directions. And third one is the NORAD TLEs. As long as NORAD providing TLEs, that's really nice for the project because you can compare to the NORAD TLE what your quality of your own calculated TLE is. And when it's not there, yeah, then you really have your own one, but that's not going to happen, hopefully. And one idea is to test with circular orbits, because LEO orbits are near circular, and you have uh, then four instead of six orbital elements to determine. You don't have the eccentricity and the argument of perigee, so you can focus on four initially, and then go to the, maybe to the five and six. And for the initial stages, maybe it's nice to use omnidirectional antennas with preamps or put your antenna in a fixed position to some direction. We can do simulate that what's the best, best one and just wait till it comes over and hey, it's, it's in Kelpoli or hey, it's in, in Guilford and you can slowly move to the, to the orbit. <coughs> and it's really important to choose the correct ground station for the correct task. When you want to know information about the inclination, there's no use choosing all stations on the uh, equator because you, they don't provide information about the inclination. It's better to use other stations for that. Running out of time? Okay. So the simulation model, because Kenso doesn't provide so much data yet. Uh, we use the STP4 algorithm two times per satellite. One time to cal calculate the real position. So I just uh, get the NORA TLE. Uh, image sim simulation model and let the satellite fly around. And on the other hand, other part of the program, I try to reconstruct the orbit, also by a TLE, also feed that TLE into the SCP-4. I have two uh, positions of the satellite, one real one and one estimated one, and I can see what the difference is and tune a little bit. And simulation model is, of course, to generate reception data of Kenso, because it's not there. And mainly it's signal strength from a, gr uh, from a ground station receiving a satellite and the frequency at the ground station because the frequency are Doppler shifted. So this is the two main parts as the input for the orbit determination. And it's based out of three elements, satellites flying around, transmitting data, radio links, attenuated, attenuating the radio signals and ground stations receiving satellite data on a certain frequency. And the idea is to make it flexible and modular. I can change part of the model, start fairly simple, and then put more and more information in there. And for the hardware people, some software things. <laughs> when you go to one pub, doesn't matter. You can order a beer, you said get beer, and depending on where you are, Irish pub, or a Dutch pub or a Belgian pub, you get different kind of beers. Irish pub, you get a Guinness. Dutch pub, you get a Hertog Jan, one of my favorites. And Belgian, you get a De Koning. And depending on where you are, you get a different beer with the same get beer call. Don't do it in the pub. And it's also true for a radio link, for example. I have one radio link. I start, first start with a simple link, or then an advanced one, and then an experimental one. And it's all can, can be configured in a, in a a file or a configuration or whatever. And then you get a minus 120 dBm, minus 122 and minus 100, whatever. And that's a little bit basic principle of design pattern, that kind of thing. It's really basic, but. So how can we determine the correctness of the determined orbit? Um, first with some Doppler analysis, the time of closest approach. It's a well-defined point in time. You can compare it with the real one uh, compared to the observed one. You can do some curve fitting because the Doppler curve really fits in. You can do an analysis of your signal strength. It will be in a curve. And you can look at the acquisition of signal, loss of signal in time. So almost to finish, what's the definition of a correct orbit? You can say if I, you can look at the percentage of data received in Genso compared to the maximum possible amount of data received. You can do a mathematical 
deviation, but then you have to know the NORAD one. And you can look at the time frame, the speed in which Kenzo is able to uh, get the right orbit. So it will be a combination of that, I think. And to finish with the discussion, when you do this, implementing orbit determination, one question is who wants to track a satellite using a potentially wrong TLE? Because you send out wrong TLEs, I don't want to spend uh, two days or one week tracking satellite which isn't there, so that's a thing to solve. It has some impact on the scheduling itself because you're taking away ground stations from Genso doing the task of collecting telemetry data, but now you use them for orbit determination. And the other question is, is MSAT also able to do something similar? We, or do we need a system like Genso for this? Or, put it otherwise, does MSAT need Genso when there are no TLEs provided anymore by NORAD? That's a pub question, I think, for this evening. <laughs> okay, I want to thank many people so far for advice and interesting discussions and other things from Genso, from the amateur radio community, Open University, two coaches, and especially the last one, Linda, my girlfriend. Uh, Open University, you study at home, so every time I have a new idea, I go down, hey, I have a good new idea, and she, every time she listens, so thank you. <laughs> so, maybe you have questions now, suggestions or remarks, or we can speak later about it. And good ideas to serve a beer, I think. Any questions? Yeah, yeah are you going to have a feedback to um, Nora, the TLE you developed for them to share? <coughs> uh, okay. The one -way system? Yeah, the question is, can we uh, feed back the TLEs Genso is providing back to NORAD uh, when we can prove ours are better? Maybe the answer I don't know. That's a nice thing to keep in mind. Uh, yeah. Okay. I probably missed your point. What are you getting from the network regarding from a certain ground station? What information you are getting about a certain From one ground station, it's just the amateur... A ground station. Sorry, for? Uh, for one, it's it's uh, signal strength and uh, fre frequent frequency, or the function of the signal strength, or momentary, or the behavior of the signal strength. Signal strength and frequency in time. In time. So. So the ground station has to track the satellite. Yeah. Just like a normal amateur radio station. Th that's the challenge I have to face. Okay. okay. Uh, that, oh, that's all? Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah, indirectly, but... Uh, sorry. I have to... Are there any quick web questions? Yeah, I've got one question uh, from Aiko on OEO. Uh, is that how will you cope with the fact that um, a lot of tubes that don't have a continuous beeping signal Yeah, I think keep on listening. That, that are the pr practical things we will face, I think, in practice after simulation. But I think I'll start first simulating continuous signal and then do an inter intermittent one. Just I take it into account. One last question. In order to use the signal strength data, do you have to know the transmission power from each satellite? Uh, actually, not directly. What we need is some, I call them ground station statistics. Statistics for each ground station, you have to know what the uh, maximum and minimum signal strength is for that special ground station. So you have to keep a database of every ground station. When you have an S8, that's different from one ground station to the other one. So we need, we need to collect some statistics for that. But your your signal strength data is essentially replacing your range data. Is that right? Uh, kind of. Okay. But you, then you don't need to know what, how much. No, but there's so, so much things going in between between the satellite and the ground station, so you can't use it directly, I think. But maybe that's a I good think, idea. I think, I think we're, we're running short of time now. Uh, 
No, thank you, Colleg. I think we take I think we take this offline. Thank you, Eva, for that. And the one thing I would say is that um, Eva has adopted some of my software. But the nice thing about it is it's also feeding back into the open source community that the work is doing as well. Thank you, Eva. Thank you.